Hi, welcome, hello. On today's episode, I have the pleasure to sit down with a professional Foley artist from Toronto. For those who aren't familiar with the term Foley, it means everyday sound effects added to movies post-production. Today's guest appears on the credit of over 300 major movies and series productions, such as Queen of the South, Fargo, Charmed, The Conjuring, Prison Break, Jane the Virgin, and much more. In 2019, he was nominated for an Emmy for his work in Deadwood the movie. He managed to build a huge audience on Instagram, but more recently has been working hard on his YouTube channel, Audio Studio Inc. He shares lessons, tips, answers common questions, and much more. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. If you have any questions for Stefan, make sure to write them down in the comment section below. I'm sure he'll answer you. On this week's Let's Chat, Stefan tells us about the time his office got swatted because of a suitcase full of shoes. On the What Happens Online segment, we react to an ASMR video. He's made thousands of sounds over the span of two decades, and today he gives us a sneak peek at his impressive career. I'm proud to present today's guest, Stefan Fraticelli, alias Audio Studio. Hi, welcome, hello. This is the seventh episode of Behind the Alias. I'm Jim Buteau, as usual. Today, I'm proud to present Stefan Fraticelli, alias Audio Studio. He's joining me this week for three segments. Thanks for joining me. I'm happy to have you. Thank you, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you having me on. So I did a very, very basic description of what Folly is, but I'm sure as passionate as you are, you probably have a better way to put it than I did. Essentially, what the process is, um, is once once a film or a TV show has been shot and edited together, picture edited, um, then Foley is part of the post-production audio process where we as Foley artists will go through and add in a whole bunch of sounds, sound effects after. And those essentially are like a layer that will sit on top of the track that they recorded on set, the dialogue track. And basically they're heightening um, everything that the actors are directly touching or moving, including themselves. So that would include all the actor's footsteps. You know, anytime somebody grabs anything, like leans on a counter, punches someone, you know, folds a newspaper, washes dishes. If the actors are interacting with physical objects, that would be covered by Foley artists. And we add that in once the film's all put together. How did you become a Foley artist? Initially, the first time I heard about Foley, um, I was at Universal Studios as a kid. And um, I was lucky enough to go to like a Foley exhibit where they allowed a few people to come up on stage. And we got to like, you know, shake some rocks and like break a glass and knock on a door. Uh, in time with like a big a big screen projecting a film and of course you know we were all kids and it was then when they played it back it was terrible but it just sort of really stuck with me um, as I grew up and I remember thinking like how that's a job how can that be a job like that's amazing you're like hey that's great I get paid for throwing stuff on the ground and breaking glass <laughs> yeah which is that's pretty much my job you know that's what I usually tell <laughs> Is I like I shake things and drop things and that's that's pretty much it. I am originally from Montreal and when I moved to Toronto, it was my goal to get into Foley. I went around and visited all the Foley studios that there were in downtown Toronto, which was about five. And, you know, I tried to talk my way into like an apprenticeship and I was completely denied at all of them. They were just like, forget it, get out of here. You don't have any experience. What are you doing? Like, forget it. 
So it was a little bit disheartening. Um, I worked at some other aspects in the film industry for a little while, like just doing, you know, craft service and production assistant on set. But then luckily, uh, very luckily, I, I ended up at a dinner party like five years later where I ended up sitting beside a Foley artist. We talked for a while and hit it off and he sort of said, oh, you should come up to the studio and check it out. And so I just like quit my job the next day. The next morning I quit and uh, I started going up to the studio like every day and just trying to do whatever I could to make myself helpful and not in the way, um, you know, making coffee and like cleaning up and keeping my mouth shut and all that stuff. Eventually it sort of led to learning a little bit about how the process goes and then eventually being able to try some things and then finally getting to do my own like short, low budget, independent films and then meeting other other people in the industry and moving around and it's kind of just grown from there and that was that was 20 years ago do you remember what the first official sound you made was well that's a good question i don't know if i've ever thought about that probably background footsteps uh like group footsteps because footsteps are actually like the most difficult thing to do uh, as a foley artist they take the most practice to be able to like walk in a very limited space in time with the actors on the screen and have it sound natural. Sometimes we do like uh, background characters that are just kind of milling about if there's a scene that takes place in a museum or something and there's like 40 people walking behind them. Um, you can get a few people to come in and just do some general group footsteps. So I think that's probably the first thing I did. I got to just kind of walk around and hear my footsteps become part of the scene. And it was pretty Pretty exciting, even though it seems so, you know, straightforward. It was it was amazing. That's kind of one of the question I had. Uh, so when you make the sounds, obviously we see you look at something and we assume it's a screen. But when you get hired to make a sound, they send you the footage. Yeah, we we don't get hired by um, like on a sound by sound basis. We get hired for the entire project. OK, so, so yeah. the entire movie. Yeah, the entire movie or the entire series. Or series, yeah. Yeah, of a, of a TV series. The way, the way the workflow is, you know, when I first started, they would actually FedEx the film up in a package, like in a VHS or beta or whatever format it was. And then we would, you know, load that into the computer, digitize it. Um, but now they will just, you know, FTP the film up to us, we'll do all the sounds and then just send a Pro Tools session back down to them and they can add that directly into their mix. So it's very, very streamlined and efficient. How do you make it, how do you make a name in that industry and probably don't just go and say, hey, I want to audition for this? Yeah, it's one of the, Foley is one of the most challenging things to get into. I mean, First of all, there's a very high demand for it because it's honestly, it's it's a fun job. It's creative and you you get to like play with things for a living, right? So a lot of people think they want to get into that and there are really not many spots available, to be honest. Um, like for instance, in Toronto, I don't, like we, I don't even know how many millions of people we have here. And I think there are like, I know all the Foley artists and I think there are about like 14 of us basically handling all, all the work, you know, and a lot of that isn't even Canadian, right? Like the, the films I'm on are Hollywood. Um, so that's even less people handling the Canadian industry, right? When we get hired, it's not by a film company or a film production company. Um, our clients are mixing studios, post-production audio studios in the States, in LA. So a film will be shot and they will take it to a post-production studio where they'll be handling the entire mix and sound effects and ADR, dialogue recording, everything. And uh, many of these studios don't have Foley rooms of their own, so they outsource the Foley. So those are who our clients are. They'll get hired to do the whole package and then they'll contact us and uh, we'll do the Foley portion for them. The relationships that we've had with these post-production studios have been kind of ongoing for like, you know, 30 years, 40 years. And, you know, some of the clients that we have down there used to be Canadians that have gone down to LA and got into mixing and started their own businesses. And now they have a lot of work and they just feed stuff to us. The way that I've been able to make a name for myself and get regular work is just through associating myself with people that have been doing it for even longer than I have, you know, and 
then you just provide good work and you make sure that you're proud of what you're doing and the clients are always happy. And then it just, you'll get the next project. It's that easy. Yeah, so it's basically all networking, right? There's really no other way. <laughs> if it's that hard to get into, I can understand why there aren't uh, a lot of people. And that's why we don't hear about it either, right? It's only a few people. And and actually, if, if <clears throat> you look on, on YouTube and even just Google about folly, there isn't a whole lot on there. You come up really often, actually, as one of the. <laughs> it's one of the. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm I'm in Montreal. I've been in Toronto, so you're the closest to me that I can find on the internet. But uh, there isn't no, a mean, whole I, lot on there. I think I I probably have the largest like online presence because of my Instagram page. You know, there wasn't really. Foley artists weren't really sharing what they did. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of Foley artists also feel very, very proprietary about what they're doing and all their, all their Foley secrets. And they, they don't want to, they don't want to share like the techniques that they have for, for making sounds and all this kind of stuff. And I, you know, I don't, I don't really subscribe to that philosophy. I feel like I'm not threatened to teach people things. I feel like if you teach people there will be another generation that will come up and will be doing amazing things. And they're going to take the knowledge that you give them and, you know, expand on it and make it their own. And, you know, I think that kind of, that kind of worry about sharing what you're doing is just sort of a sense of insecurity. And I don't, I don't really have that personally. So that's why I started the Instagram page, you know, people, friends of mine were always saying like, you should, you know, show me what you're doing at work. I don't really understand what Foley is. And so I started it and then it just kind of, caught on and grew from there and uh, then it led to other platforms and stuff so you have a large inventory of props now uh, are they all at your studio do you have enough space to keep all of them we have i mean we have a lot of space to uh, accommodate all the props and um there's there's everything there you know like the only I can't really remember the last time I needed to get something that we didn't have other than like organic material. Like, you know, you need to replenish celery and pretzels and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, I did get some skates recently um, because the ones we had were just like completely falling apart. But um, yeah, so we have, so we have like multiple prop storage areas in addition to multiple Foley recording rooms and mix rooms at the facility. If we exclude boots and shoes, what's the item you use the most? First of all, these days I'm really focused on footsteps. Like that's what I'm doing almost, almost all the time now, which is, which is actually what I love. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, so I've kind of moved into that direction because it's typically footsteps are always like a, the more senior Foley artist role because they take a little more practice and, uh, I'm still learning, you know, like my footsteps are getting better every year. But in terms of props that I would use most of, it would probably be office things. So like chairs, office chairs, like sitting down in office chairs, paper, there's definitely lots of paper, you know, people are always rifling through folders and, you know, photographs, that kind of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, that includes like writing. And then there's a, a huge medical component. Uh, like it depends on what on what kind of series you're on, right? Like the cop shows will always have like caution tape and guns and knives and, you know, metal table for interrogation hands and all that kind of thing. And then the medical shows will have like rubber gloves movement and like all the wheelchairs and gurney moves and syringes and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if I could identify, you know, the most common prop. It really varies. You talked about the... Uh police officers and guns so obviously fully it wouldn't include a gun gunshot what's the biggest lining between foley and sound effect this is a question that comes up pretty regularly is like how do you know what you should be covering and what sound effects are going to be covering sometimes there there is some overlap but generally speaking foley is always related to movement on the screen Jane. Okay, fun. Yeah. No problem. Ready? Set. Go. Uh, 
usually movement of actors, you know, so it's like I said, putting on a coat or, uh, you know, doing, doing some writing or washing dishes, that kind of thing. Whereas sound effects editors are putting in, they're putting in way more than Foley. First of all, they have different categories, right? So they'll be doing, they'll be doing huge sounds like, like explosions or avalanches or, you know, tidal waves, um, then they do all the mechanical sounds like a car engine running or, uh, you know, blenders or uh, anything, vacuum cleaner that's on. Uh, and then they'll put in nature sounds like rain or, um, you know, wind blowing, that sort of thing. And animal vocalizations like cats meowing, dogs barking, birds chirping, anything you hear um, that's animal related. So uh, that's kind of the distinction. There are a few things where, you know, it's kind of questionable if there's overlap, like sometimes doors closing, um, you know, in the Foley studio, we only have like maybe three doors and, you know, they get old for a while, right? You don't want to hear the same door over and over, whereas sound effects libraries would have, you know, thousands of doors. Um, and so we would do like hands on the door and grabbing the doorknob and that sort of thing. Whereas the sound effects editors usually would do the slams or the closes because they can vary it a little bit. So you're talking about varying. And I, 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 as I was doing some research about uh, Foley and all of that, I uh, stumbled upon this thing called the Wilhelm scream, mm -hmm. which is obviously not Foley. So just to just for reference for people that don't know, right. it's a uh, it's a scream that originated originated back in the 1950s and some character that was obviously called Wilhelm. I'm not going to get into all the details, but it ended up being used in hundreds of movies and always the same, same, same scream. And yeah. up to some extent, it became kind of a joke, I guess, for the sound designers. Are there any sort of equivalent in Foley of a sound that just keeps coming back? Or because you guys do things from scratch all the time, that that's not a thing that can be possible? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm familiar with the Wilhelm, Wilhelm scream, and it's it's kind of a funny concept. I like the fact that it still makes appearances in, in you know, different films every once in a while. But there, there really isn't. I mean, Foley by its very nature is always created every time new to match, to match the film or the scene that we're working on. Um, you know, we don't, I mean, we do, we keep a library of everything that we do, um, but we don't really reuse anything with the exception of maybe uh, something that involved a huge setup. Like we've brought some cars into the studio and recorded a few sounds in the interior of the actual car in the studio. Um, so we might use some of that car seat movement if we felt like it would add a nice layer or, you know, if we're filling up a huge water tank and doing like giant splashes that are making a huge mess in the studio. And then we're working on a film that might have like one splash in it. We would consider reusing that. But, uh, other than that, the sounds are always created uh, every single time fresh, you know. What's the hardest one you had to recreate? One of the one of the hardest things I had to do when I was new, what was it? Somebody broke a bar of soap and we didn't have we didn't have soap. Like we didn't have a bar of soap at the studio and and it was like three o'clock in the morning and nothing was open. And I was like, oh, my God, how am I going to make that sound? Because it's so specific. Um, and I was kind of panicked, but I ended up like, I ended up getting some butter. I got a stick of butter and put it in the freezer while I was like cleaning, <laughs> cleaning up. And then by the time I cleaned up, the butter was kind of frozen and like, I got it and I, it was like, and it was like, perfect. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. Cause I was like, it was the last thing to do in the whole film. And I was like, fuck, I don't have any soap. What am I going to do? Cause I don't know. It's it's a tough sound to recreate if you don't have soap. One one of the other more difficult sounds that I had to create was um, I was working on a film called Your Highness, and um, in that film there are some like it's like a magical film, and there's fairies that flutter around. That would be one of the areas that could be covered by sound effects editors or could be covered by Foley because they're kind of magic and. Usually magical things would be sound effects editors, but they were asking for, for Foley to cover it. 
Um, so I kind of struggled a lot with finding something. I was like flapping things, but it wasn't fast enough because they were really speedy. Um, and I, yeah, I just that <laughs> tried a whole bunch of different things. And eventually I was like, okay, I have to go to the grocery store because that's, you know, fully often gets resolved at grocery stores. You just walk down the aisles and there's <laughs> so much stuff there. Yeah. I'm like, look at this, look at this. And I found some like seaweed, dried seaweed sheets, uh, which were like really light and, and like crispy kind of. And I thought that would be perfect for the wings. And then I ended up getting like a bicycle and putting it upside down and spinning the spokes, you know, the old kid trick. Uh, spinning the spokes and then putting the seaweed sheet in there and it had that really like nice light fluttery sound uh and it worked great so that's what they ended up going with so <laughs> so you made you recreated that sound with your mouth while we were talking about it do you ever have to use your mouth for sounds can can you or um you know some some foley artists do uh and they're kind of foley artists that more border like on the line of sound effects editing also, you know, like I've, I've heard stories of Foley artists that would, would do like a for like the back of a plane taking off or something like that. And then it goes through some sort of a, you know, a harmonizer or, or EQs and, you know, it, that, that can work, but to me, that's not really Foley, um, you know, personally. So the only time I use my mouth for stuff is if it's like a mouth related sound. Um, so we do like, like blowing and like this kisses, every film has kisses. You're not hearing them. You're hearing my hand. I'm sorry to tell you, um, you know, but that sort of thing, drinking sips blows, you know? Uh, so if anybody's interested in learning more about Foley, uh, you can check out my YouTube page, which is audio studio Inc. And it's O D D I O. Um, and I do some like little Foley lessons there and some side by side, um, Foley examples with films and just some anecdotes and fun stuff. So come check it out if you're interested. Thanks. And in the meantime, uh, this is the end of the first segment for this week with Stefan. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be hearing some funny stories he's had over the years. So make sure to check us out tomorrow at seven. Mm -hmm.